The first step in slip covering a wingback chair is to, of course, remove the cushion and then loosely cut out pieces to cover every part of the chair that we will need to be slip covering, which is all of it. So, I'm paying attention to where the seams are in the chair already and using that as my guideline to cut pieces so that they'll fit in the areas where the seams are. So you'll see that there is a seam there in the side and so I know that I'm going to go that far and then over to the end of the wing. And then I'm also doing the same on the outside of the wing and underneath the arm there is a seam that runs from the back of the chair to the front of the chair and I know that I want my piece to drape over as far as the seam and a little bit beyond to allow for seam allowance. So I'm just following the guidelines of the chair and very loosely cutting out pieces. These will be fitted later, so this is just to give me something to start working with. So for this project, I used painter's drop cloth, just the kind that you can find at Lowe's or on Amazon, made for painters. I actually shared a tutorial on my blog on how to turn it from that tan canvas rough material to the soft and white material that you can Next, I'm making piping by sandwiching six 30 seconds of an inch cord between a four inch or three inch strip of canvas drop cloth. So I'm just making sure to go on that barely outside edge of the piping by using a zipper foot. Um, you can't just use any, any old foot um, because if it can't get close enough to the cording, it will be floppy piping. You don't want that. So next, I'm starting to piece the pieces together in all the places I see that this, the chair has seams. So I'm starting with the back and going along where I can see that the original manufacturer of the chair put a seam along the back. So I'm just using my pins to follow along that line. And I'm gonna put so many pins that it'll make a nice line for me to sew along. So these, this is the way I'm going to make sure that it fits the chair just perfectly. I'm going to put the pins right along the original line and then sew along that line. So you'll see me going back and forth from the chair to the machine, to the chair to the machine. So I have just gone over to my machine to record it and sewed along those pins along the line. Next I'm doing the inside of the wing and I'm just pinning along it, making sure to kind of smooth it out in between times, making sure it's still going to fit nicely. I do this all the time while I'm slip covering. And then I'm going to do um, the back where it meets the back piece and the inside of the wing. So this seems like a very complicated process and you'll want to think you need to, step, to follow the steps just absolutely perfectly. but. I'm just going piece by piece and following along all the original lines of the chair. I'm not really necessarily going in any particular order. I just know that I need to go along the original seam lines and then over to my machine, sew it a little bit, bring it back to the chair, make sure it fits, and on and on until I think I have the right fit. So I'm sewing the back here to the wing piece and then I'm going to take it over to my machine sew it and retry it on the chair and just continue that process.
Okay, so here is where the piping I made earlier comes in. Basically, I'm just following all the same spots that the original chair had piping and sandwiching in the piping in those same spots. So the raw edges will all be facing to the outside and the piping itself will be inside just underneath my pins. I want to get the pins tight enough to near the top of the piping so that it's still nice and tight to the chair but so that I'm also not sewing over the actual cording. After the bottom of the chair was hemmed, or the bottom of the slipcover was um, trimmed all the way around to be sure that it was even, I stitched on a ruffle that was about five inches in length, hemmed onto the bottom of the slipcover with the piping sandwiched in between and all um, raw edges facing to the outside. Okay, so for the cushion cover, I used the cushion as a pattern to trace onto the drop cloth the shape, leaving about a half an inch or so all, all the way around for seam allowance. And then I also cut a strip to go all the way around the entire perimeter of the chair cover. And um, that would basically join the top piece and the bottom pieces together. And the reason I say pieces is because for the bottom I actually cut the shape out but made sure that two pieces overlapped because I wanted to make this an envelope style enclosure um, cushion cover. Now to actually pin it and sew it, I wanted to sew um, piping all the way around. So I made sure to pin it all the way around while I was pinning the middle piece to the top and the bottom to the middle piece. Um, I sandwiched the piping inside with all the raw edges facing out 
all the way around on the top and the bottom, and you'll see I used a lot of paints for this part. 